so we're we're going to talk about anaphylaxis and and you you all heard already the talk uh, the talks today and uh, uh, the 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 spectrum of symptoms that that patients with food allergy present with uh, is, is very broad and the one we worry about most is anaphylaxis and luckily it's the one that I probably in my clinic see the least. I think that the majority of patients with food allergy that I see come to the clinic with rashes and with other gastrointestinal symptoms. Rarely I see patients who actually had a severe case of anaphylaxis. But we're all worried about anaphylaxis. I have actually witnessed anaphylaxis after uh, ingestion of uh, food in, in one particular case. When I was a medical student, my mom ate a shrimp at a restaurant and within five minutes we couldn't recognize her. She was really getting really sick very quickly. And I was a pretty ignorant medical student, didn't know what to do. Luckily there was a surgeon in the room and uh, uh, the guy sent me down to the pharmacy. There was a pharmacy next door. I got a uh, uh, two epi you know, it, this was, I have an accent, this is in Mexico, in Acapulco. And I went down to the pharmacy, took out a hundred pesos, put it on the desk of the, of the pharmacist, and I said, give me two shots of epinephrine right now. And the guy saw me so scared, he gave me the epinephrine, I rushed up to the restaurant, and, and the surgeon sa saved my mom's life. Um, that is not the case in the U.S. In the U.S., emergency service, services work really fast. And there, we probably could have never relied on calling 911 and getting help. So uh, the key to treating anaphylaxis is uh, really starting very early. And to be able to start very early, you need to be able to recognize the symptoms of anaphylaxis. And the problem is that they can be very generic at first and they can get very, very bad very, very quickly. So I've outlined for you the typical symptoms that you will see in a patient with anaphylaxis. And typically what you expect to see is more than one of these symptoms. And if you see more than one of these symptoms, you should start getting worried that maybe you're dealing with anaphylaxis. So it, it, the, probably the most common manifestation of food allergies in the skin, you see many hives you, over the body. You may see them initially in the face, but you may see them spread to the rest of the body. That's the, the primary organ where you will see symptoms uh, with food allergies. It's common to see uh, uh, in the mouth significant tongue swelling or itching or difficulty. In a young baby, you might not see that their throat is closing, but you may see that they can't swallow well, so they're starting to salivate a little bit more and, and because their throat is closing. Uh, you may see swelling of the eyes and the ears, the hands, the, the, the heart rate may increase because uh, the, the spa the, when you're having anaphylaxis, your blood pressure goes down, so the heart wants to pump faster so that you can supply blood to the main organs in your body. Respiratory-wise, you may have difficulty breathing, cough, a little bit of tightness in the chest is usually the first symptom that the patients notice. And one symptom that is very classic in severe anaphylaxis is this feeling of impending doom. The patient will quickly tell you, I feel like I'm dying. And you should trust when they tell you that, that they could potentially die. So you need to act quickly there. So generally speaking, I would say that if you see more than one symptom, or if you see a symptom that seems to be generalizing in the body, you should quickly consider that you may be dealing with anaphylaxis. And what you should remember is this, that it's much easier to treat anaphylaxis early on in comparison to later. And because some of the symptoms of anaphylaxis that are fatal can happen very quickly, you don't want to wait to see what's going to happen. You want to intervene quickly. So, how do we manage anaphylaxis? First and foremost, inject epinephrine. That's why we prescribe ep EpiPens to all of you when we see you in the clinic. Epinephrine is a life-saving measure. And it should be used 
quickly and early in the treatment of anaphylaxis. Now, uh, when I think of epinephrine and why it should be used, uh, 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 the, uh, the, the key thing to remember is this. There are, I prescribe hundreds of epinephrines every year and only a handful of patients use them. So, so the majority of the epinephrines that we prescribe will never be used. But what we know is this, is that when we analyze the cases of patients who had a fatal outcome because of a food allergy, in those cases, the majority of them, the, the application of epinephrine was delayed by more than 35 to 40 minutes to those patients. So there, there is a correlation, there is an, a, 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 a clear correlation between acting quickly and not having a fatal outcome. So if you think you're dealing with anaphylaxis, don't wait. Use the epinephrine, use it quickly. If uh, you are accompanied by someone while you are applying the epinephrine, you should direct that other person to call 911. If you are the only person there, give the epinephrine first and then call 911. But 911 should be contacted immediately. If you feel that you need to use the epinephrine, you want to have emergency service available to you very quickly. When you call 911, I recommend that you tell them that you're dealing with a patient that is having an anaphylactic reaction and may need epinephrine. Because I want the emergency services to arrive at the scene already armed and ready to give more epinephrine if they need to. So let them know, I am dealing with a patient that has an allergic reaction. He may need epinephrine. Come immediately, okay? In, the, in this area, emergency services will be there within five to six minutes at the latest. So it, it, that it, we are very fortunate to have that situation. Probably the second most important thing after giving it, well, the first most important thing is obviously recognizing that you need to give epinephrine and uh, have the guts to give it. <laughs> That's the first one. Um, uh, the second one is probably lifting the legs. Uh, the, we don't pay too much attention to this, but what is happening during anaphylaxis is this recurring theme where your blood pressure is dropping. If your blood pressure is dropping, you're not getting enough blood supply to the main organs in your body. After actually laying down and lifting your legs, it's an amazing measure to take. And you should always try to do that because when you lift the legs, you really, of your three liters of blood that you have in a regular adult, one of those three liters is in the legs and can go to the main organs and really supply the organs with oxygen. So that's a very, very important measure. Epinephrine, call 911, lay down the patient and lift the legs. If the patient is vomiting or having difficulty, put him on a side so that he doesn't choke on those, uh, on, on those uh, materials. Third, you could consider giving antihistamines, but I would say more importantly, if the patient is also asthmatic and has an, uh, an inhaler and is having difficulty breathing using the albuterol, the, uh, would be a very good idea. And, and, and that, that should be done. But very quickly, within five minutes of having given the first shot of epinephrine, you should consider whether the patient is doing better or not. If your child or, or whoever it is that you're treating is doing better, you can just observe and wait for the, for, for the emergency services to arrive. If, uh, if, if you don't see an improvement of any kind, you should quickly, within about maybe five minutes, give a second shot of epinephrine. And I want to tell you, do not be afraid about this. I, I, had a, I have a, a girl, she's 11 years old, uh, she came back from, from, from school and uh, there were a, a few cookies in the counter uh, and she was all by herself at home. She took a bite of the cookie and then she realized, I don't know what's in this cookie. Maybe there are peanuts in it and uh, she's allergic to peanuts. She freaked out. Uh, she freaked out so much that she thought she was having an allergic reaction. She was actually having a panic reaction that had nothing to do with allergies. There were no peanuts in those cookies. The mother would never bring peanuts to the house. She gave herself a shot of epinephrine because she was afraid she was having anaphylaxis. 
She was panicking, so she didn't get better with the epinephrine. So she gave herself a second shot of epinephrine in the two legs. And then she was brought to the clinic and, you know, she did perfectly fine. Nothing bad happened to her for getting two shots of epinephrine. And I actually, when I talked to her, I praised her. I'd rather see you do that than the late treatment of anaphylaxis. Last, um, the, the patient should be transported to the unit, to, to the ER and be observed for a few hours. Most often, one shot of, of, of epinephrine, if given early, will probably take care of the problem, but there can be delayed reactions, so it's a good idea to be seen in the emergency room and to be watched for a little while before you can go back home. And most patients, I, I can't remember anyone who I have seen in the last few years that got a shot of epinephrine, came to the ER, and wasn't able to go home a few hours later. But I think it's a good idea to be watched in, in, in the emergency room. So uh, if there is any doubt about whether your child is having an allergic reaction, give epinephrine. Epinephrine is very safe. It can save your child's life, and it's much better than having to deal with that severe anaphylactic reaction with delayed care, which could be potentially fatal. So let's talk, talk about some real life scenarios. We've dealt with these cases. These are actually uh, questions that we have directly received from patients uh, in the clinic. And I'd like to get a sense from you how you would treat or manage this situation. So my son has a known food allergy to nuts. The daycare called and told me that he's coughing, has a rash in his eyes, are swollen. Uh, they call me to see if they should call 911. What should I do? Give epinephrine, absolutely. So the option here, and I didn't write this down, is that this patient, this mother said, this mother said, uh, they don't have the epinephrine there, so should I take it? And I, I, I'd say, well, so first of all, epinephrine should have been available in, the, in that uh, setting for that child in the daycare. But I would rather you instruct or call 911 and have 911, you know, emergency service bring the medicine to the to, to the daycare rather than you killing yourself in the road trying to get there. I, 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 I had a situation when they called me about my son in daycare and I rushed to the daycare and I, I can remember that. I probably almost killed myself once or twice in the road trying to get there and it, it was a big mistake. So, so of course, if you're next door to the daycare, bring the epinephrine, but otherwise have 911 bring the epinephrine and give it to the child take the child to the emergency room, observe this child for a little while, everything will be okay. So, I left the room to do a laundry and came back and my four-year-old daughter was coughing. Uh, there were several honey nut Cheerios on the floor. She's diagnosed with a tree nut allergy, but only probably had time to eat a couple of them while I was in the other room. Should I give epinephrine? Yes, again, we really don't know how many, uh, how many, how many uh, of these Cheerios did the child eat. What we know is the child is coughing, and I don't like the symptom of cough when you're having an allergic reaction. It suggests to me that there is a more generalized reaction involving the lungs, and that one would be, for me, a quick one to say, give the epinephrine, raise the legs, call 911. This is a common scenario. My parents were watching my daughter and decided to give her a little taste of ice cream. She has a known milk allergy, but they don't think it could be that serious. She started to get several hives around her mouth and a couple on her arm two minutes after eating it. She sneezed once. What should I do? You know, epinephrine is a good idea here too. But what I want to tell you is, I am the one with the grayest hair in this room, and I've been in this clinic for about 15 years, and before me, my boss had been in this clinic for about 15 years. And I, in 
all these 30 years of clinical practice that we've had at Stanford, we've lost only one patient to food allergy. One. And this was totally preventable. This was a child with very severe milk allergy. So when I heard, when I, when I read this question from this mother, it, it brought back memories of this child. This is a child with very severe milk allergy that the parents went on a trip, left the child with grandparents. The grandparents didn't think the allergy was that severe, and they gave the child a glass of chocolate milk. And by the time the emergency services arrived, there was really nothing to do. Uh, it was a very, very sad case. So what, what, what I think it's important here is you need to educate the people around you about the allergy of your child. And uh, two things I learned from this. Number one, fa fatal cases are extremely rare. We are one of the large clinics that sees many patients with food allergies. Seventy percent of the kids I see in the clinic every week have food allergies. I prescribe hundreds of epinephrine shots every, uh, uh, every year, and yet I've never lost a child in my clinic due to a food <laughs> allergy. So I think that the likelihood that this will happen in the near future or in, in the distant future is very, very low. But it could happen because of poor management and poor education. So identifying the situations where your child is at higher risk of allergy is very important and anticipating those is very important. Teaching people around you who interact with your child is very important as well. My daughter has a nut allergy. She had a few bites of frozen yogurt from a local store. She has been there before and eaten their yogurt without any reactions. A few minutes after, her lips started to swell a little bit and her right eye looked kind of swollen. She says she feels like she can't breathe and her throat feels tight, but her color looks good and she's still breathing well. Should I give Benadryl? No. no. Epinephrine, yes. And this, this I, I, I selected this case because, I mean, I knew you were going to know to give epinephrine. She has tightness in her breathing and difficulty breathing. It's a very straightforward case. But the learning point here is the, the, the mother went to an ice cream parlor where her child had eaten ice cream before, and it was okay. But she didn't tell the attendant, my child is allergic to nuts or to egg or whatever it was. And then we don't know if the attendant mixed from one scoop to the other and wasn't careful enough. So that might have been what elicited the reaction here. So remember that when you go to places like, 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 like a restaurant that you always go to and you al they always know, they already know you and they know that your child is allergic to peanut, tell them. Remember my son is allergic to peanuts. Don't, don't be shy to remind people about this. And the, 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 the people in the restaurant or the ice cream parlor will be careful then. My daughter has milk, egg, and nut allergy. She did an oral milk challenge uh, last Friday in clinic. She passed the challenge without any reactions. I've given her dairy products, and today she has redness around her chin, cheeks, and says her mouth feels super itchy. Should I keep giving milk? Probably not. Should you give epinephrine? Probably not. I think I could watch. I would watch this kid a little longer, uh, and, and and see where things go. And if symptoms get worse or the hives start spreading to the rest of the body, then I would worry about the epinephrine. But in this particular case, I would probably watch her. I also think we need to revisit the fact that she's having these symptoms with milk and it would be a good idea to not give her milk until she's seen back in the clinic and we can figure out what exactly is going on. Maybe there was cross-contamination with something else, we don't know. Okay, so frequently asked questions. Why use epinephrine? Well, epi is life-saving. It can really it turn around the reaction very quickly and it prevents progression of the symptoms. It works very quickly. Anaphylaxis is most responsive when you, eat, when you use the epinephrine early, not when you use it late. So you should use it and you should use it early. And respiratory or cardiac arrest and death can occur even at an early stage. 
So waiting to use the epinephrine is not a good idea. You should use it early if you are considering the risk that your child is having an anaphylactic reaction. So is it safe to have use epinephrine? Absolutely. There is actually no contraindication to use epinephrine in anybody. And using epinephrine is one of the safest things you can do that can save your life. So there is really no reason not to want to use the epinephrine other than uh, having the fear of needles like I do personally, but, but uh, that's the only thing. So why epinephrine and why not antihistamines? Well, antihistamines relieve itch and they relieve uh, hives. And you saw the picture that Dr. McGee showed with the mast cell and those big granules. There are more than 27 mediators released from those mast cells when you have an allergic reaction. Antihistamines only cover you for histamine. They're antihistamine. Forget the other 26 that can potentially kill you. So antihistamines will not deal with all the other mediators that are being released by the mast cells. It's important to treat those and epinephrine will treat those. They do not uh, uh, relieve uh, airway obstruction and hypotension, the antihistamines. In fact, if you give intravenous antihistamines, that are the only antihistamines that work fast, they can cause hypotension. They can drop further your blood pressure. So that can be dangerous during an allergic reaction. So using uh, you know, fast-acting antihistamines may not be in the best interest of the patient at that time. And uh, the onset of action of antihistamines is about 20 to 30 minutes. When you need epinephrine, you need it now. You don't need it 20 minutes from now. So it's very important to use these medications uh, quickly and not to substitute the epinephrine for Benadryl because you feel that Benadryl is safer and easier to give. So how should you give a, a epinephrine? And I think that you probably all have seen this, but in, if you come to our clinic, uh, I, I have actually made it a, a point to ask the nurses to go uh, with uh, over the use of epinephrine with all the patients every time they come to the clinic. And sometimes I forget about it, but most of the time I don't, and, and I, uh, we go over it. Uh, we have a tester in the clinic you, you start by taking the epinephrine out of the, the bottle. Uh, you got to hold it firmly in your arm, and you're going to apply it probably to the leg of your child. Uh, you hold probably the leg with one hand, and you apply it. Uh, uh, but to apply it, you need to remove the blue cap first. That releases the mechanism so that it doesn't auto uh, release you know, during movement. So you remove the little blue cap. You push firmly, you count to three. The epinephrine goes in automatically. Uh, once that happens, you remove it. The needle, I think, in the newer epine uh, epinephrine actuators jumps back in so that you don't stick your own self with the needle. Uh, you massage the leg a little bit, and uh, you observe. And if you need to give a second shot, you want to give it within five, ten minutes at the most if, if the... If, 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 uh, the symptoms are not uh, going away. Uh, uh, this is a very practical approach to, 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 to the management of anaphylaxis. Uh, my anticipation, as I said, I, I prescribe hundreds of epinephrines every year, and probably maybe about five to 10 patients use them in the entire year. And I don't know if it is because I'm over-prescribing the medication, which is possible, but it, it also probably, uh, uh, there were many instances in which I feel the ep epinephrine should have been used that uh, it wasn't used. And, and uh, uh, luckily, we got away with it up to now, but, but I, I, I don't like playing the odds. I'd rather play it safe, and I recommend that if, if, you, if you are even thinking, should I use the epinephrine now, use it. There is very little to lose and a lot to gain if you are able to abort a severe allergic reaction. Okay, I'm gonna stop here and Joseph is going to talk about uh, how to manage the food allergy so that you don't have to use the epinephrine. <laughs>